Hello data people. In this video we're going to talk about custom functions and a good trick uh, that is helpful to give you a way to create and modify uh, your own custom functions. Um, if you Once you start using uh, the query editor a lot more and doing more advanced stuff you quickly learn that custom functions are, are a great way to simplify your code and save time if you use the same function over and over again. Uh, within a file or even across files. Um, there is some native functionality within Power Query to create a function from a query. Um, however, it doesn't allow you to do it from any step that you want. Um, and uh, so I'm going to show you a simple technique today to, to show you how to do that. Um, custom uh, functions are often used uh, to when you're going to transform files. And so let's use that as the demo. I've created a a uh, folder of um, really simple Excel files, just three of them, um, and you'll see the data in a minute, just some mock data. And I've pre-copied the folder path for it. And so I'll get the folder connector. Um, usually I recommend people store their files on SharePoint um, just to make refresh easier and make it easier to work with others but for what I'm showing you today it doesn't matter so using the folder uh, connector is fine. So I'm going to hit OK here and then you're going to get a pop-up window here and Power BI does have a great native functionality called combine and transform the one in yellow here where it would um, come up allow you to pick one of these files as an example file allow you to make transformations specific to that file uh, and then it would use the function that comes from that to then transform all the files and it works great if all your uh, files have exactly the same format it works great um, but you know if your files have like you know differences in uh, sheet names or table names or other types of things um, you can quickly run into errors plus it kind of clutters up your query window um, but again, uh, it's a great tool to enable people to take on, you know, a bunch of files uh, like they never could before. Um, but what I'm going to recommend you do is go to Transform Data. And then the Query Editor will pop up here. And you'll see the, the three files in that folder. And before I show you the custom function stuff, I'll just show you a, a couple other tips. Um, so the first first thing I usually do is I click on the name column, control hold control, click on the content column, remove other col remove other columns, and because usually I don't need those other columns. And notice that the order of these columns change. That's a, a tip there um, that when you do a removed other column step, it actually puts the columns in the order that you click them. And again, if if I had hit the combine and transform, I would end up in the same place, but I would have, I would have a whole bunch of other stuff here. Um, a, a, a parameter, um, another query called sample file, and then I would have the function, and then the transform sample file, um, and then I would have a sort of the parent query down here where it would give me the result of uh, applying the function to all of the files in that folder. So again, it's great functionality, but I like to keep it simple like this. So um, before I do the custom function, um, I'll just show you a couple things. Um, one thing, if, if we really just have to do simple transformations like uh, I do in with these files. You can just simply add a, a custom column here, and I happen to know these are um, Excel files, so I'll do Excel dot work. Oops, sorry. And then I will apply that to the what's in the content column, that binary file content. And hit OK, and it'll add this this column here where it's extracted the stuff there, and it and it displays the content of the Excel file in a table. Um, and here's another tip: if you click to the right of the word table, had I clicked on it, it would actually drill down into it. Um, you can you can get a preview here, and so these this table um, just contains uh, one sheet, one table. Um, so it's and it's the same data; it's just formatted as as a table on on sheet one. And so at this point, um, I got a few options, uh, but I could I could expand the the tables from the Excel. Um, 
and then the data I want are actually in this table column. Um, and you see, I need to do a promote header step here. So, so again, I could add another custom column and do use table dot promote headers on that, uh, that, that kind of thing. Um, the, the other thing you could do is just handle that, you know, right inside, uh, this, this here. So if you want to extract the first thing from that, uh, table that results from the excel.workbook, I can put uh, curly brackets zero, power query numbering starts at zero. So this would extract the first record uh, from, from that. And if I right click to the right of that, I can see, okay, it's, it's the, uh, the kind equal sheet. So this is the sheet. Um, and then what I could do is, well, actually what I want is in that data column. So I could put in square brackets, the data column, and then I just have my table here. I need to do table. Um, again, if you know the functions, you can just do I can do table dot promote headers, close my parentheses, and then boom, I've got my table. And uh, if I wanted to, I could expand it here and I'd get um, all the data uh, for for both for all three files, um, which is great. Um, and note, I'm probably an earlier step. I should have gotten rid of this one because once I made the once I made the table from it, I didn't need any more. So probably right here, I would have done a remove step, right? Um, so that's that's one way to do it. I'll delete those extra steps um, and show you all, one other way. Uh, before I show you the custom function, um, you also can transform this column. And so to do that, you either can write the syntax from scratch if you know it, uh, table.transform columns, or what you can do is take another uh, column and uh, you know go to the transform tab and say, I'll just apply the trim function. It doesn't matter. You're just doing any step here just to get it to write the syntax you need. So this is the table.transform columns function. It references the previous step, removed other columns, and then you can list multiple columns here and do multiple transformations in one step. But I'm just going to hijack this code here and say, actually, I want to transform the content column. And it's not going to be text anymore. It's going to be a table. And then I'm going to replace the function here, and I'm just going to say you need the each uh, keyword there, and then I'll do um, and then you need to do an underscore, and then I forgot to delete that comma, and then I boom I've got my I've got my table, and so again I could go I could put the curly brackets zero, square bracket data, wrap it in table dot. Uh, um, table dot promote headers, and then I'd have my data um, because this one has a table here. I also, instead of putting curly bracket zero, I could put curly bracket one since it's the second item in that table, and I'd get that record. Um, again, the data, if I right click to the right here, I can see okay that the data uh, column has the, has the table in it. Um, so I could do square bracket data, and then boom, I've got my tables, and then I could expand those and get get the final result. So again, if you're doing really simple transformations, that's that's all well and good. And of course, you'd want to rename this step to, you know, something that makes sense, um, you know, instead of because we really didn't trim text. Um, all right, so that's just a couple other tips. But to let me get to the the good part here. Um, and that one was real simple. You know, if you're doing um, promote headers or moving some rows, um, that kind of stuff, you can you can write you know two or three functions and nest them together and, and get your result pretty quickly. Uh, but say you need to do a whole lot more transformation, uh, that's where a custom function comes in handy. So here's the the reason for this video. So I'll I'll right click on this and duplicate this, and I'm going to rename this to whatever. Um, and I'll just call it transform file fn, and you don't need to put fn in front of it. I just do that to tell me this is going to be a function. Um, and what we want to do is we want to come up with a function that operates on each row of this and, and deals with the, the contents of each file. 
So to do that, I'm going to actually drill down um, to that binary. And you'll notice at the last step here is removed other columns. So I can either click on it or I can right click here and hit drill down. And you'll see it added two steps. One is it went after and got the, the content of the file. So it went to the that first row and gave the contents of the content file. So that's what drill down done is, is it goes into that row column um, intersection there. And then it automatically detected it as an Excel file. Um, and so then it applied the Excel.workbook function. So if we want to turn this into a function, um, we can now go to the uh, advanced editor. Um, well, actually, what we can do is let's take this a little further first. Um, so I'm going to I've, I've extracted the, the contents of each Excel file. So that's there. I'm going to just choose the uh, table one. All three files have a table one. Um, and then I'm going to uh, drill into the data table like we saw before. And then, boom, I've got my results. And, and let's say I want to format this as a, as a per percentage. Um, and so now I've done a bunch of steps. And so I'd like to do this. I did it on the one file. I drilled down to the one file, and I did those steps on this. How would I apply those steps here? So if I, if I go into the advanced editor, Um, you'll see the step here where it begins with the contents, the binary uh, contents of the file. It's this step called content. So what I'm going to do is just add some extra rows here. And I'm going to start creating a function. And that is you need uh, parentheses. You've got to have a parameter. So I'm just going to call the parameter file content. And then I'm going to pass that into... And so that's the equals and the greater than sign. And then I'm going to use the same name as the step above. Um, and I'm just going to assign the contents of this content step with the name of the parameter inside the um, coming inside the function. And so, you know, here it's it's not a function yet. This probably would cause some errors. You see the red underscore here. And so what we're going to do is actually comment out these rows here. So you can highlight those rows, um, hit control, and then do forward slash, and it'll comment it all out. Sorry, I forgot something here. I need a let. Every query, every, every power query here needs a let and an in. Um, and since I commented it out that let, I had to put it here. So I'm saying let the content step, the same name as the one above, equal whatever you just passed into me. Um, and so now if I hit done on this, this will turn into a function. Okay. And now I can go back to my original query that I duplicated and I can go to add column and then do invoke custom function. And I can actually apply the function that I just came up with. Oops. Let me go back and look at this. Oh, I think I applied the uh, the function to I used the wrong column as the input. So let me let me delete that step, and then I'll do it again. I chose the name column instead of the content one column. Um, that, and then I needed to choose the content column here and hit OK. And now I've got my table of results. Um, I can I can remove this column and combine the data. And now I've got a custom function. And, you know, from here, typically I encourage people to do further transformations after you've combined the files and to do the bare minimum you need inside of a function, but say there was something uh, you really needed to do uh, at the file level for like I needed to remove a few rows before it promoted headers or something, um, you can go back to here, go to the advanced editor, and now you can highlight this one, control forward slash to comment this one out, highlight the other ones, okay, and then hit done. 
and now I'm back to the query form of it. And if I needed to do, you know, some other uh, other function here, so I transform and and I'll I'll round it. Um, and since it's a percentage, I'll round it to three decimal places. And boom, now I've now I've done that. And now if I go back and convert it back to a function. Control forward slash, undo this one, control forward slash, and I'm done. And then uh, it'll turn it back to a function. If I go back here, uh, it's it's applied the, the step there, um, right? Um, so that's just a quick video to show you that uh, tip to allow you to quickly create a custom function from any step in a query and then be able to quickly toggle it back and forth if you need to make changes to it. Um, so hopefully you find that helpful. Uh, and again, if you like these videos, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get notified when the new ones come out. Thanks.